Good day to everyone once again and uh, welcome to another Coffee Break program. Today we are going to discuss about the Mu variant. Let's discuss about the Mu variant. Before we come to Mu variant, I would like to uh, review uh, the variants so far that we came across in this COVID-19 pandemic. Initially, we had the Wuhan variant, which is known as the wild variant, and that is D614G. The D614G, over the time, mutated into various variants, and then we came across alpha variant, which is found in the Kent, which was found in the Kent in England, and it was B117. Then we found the beta variant from South Africa, which is B1351. And we found the gamma variant, which is P1 from Brazil. And then we found delta variant from India, which is B1672. These four variants are nominated as variants of concerns by the WHO. Apart from that, there are some other variants which are not the variants of concern, but they are variants of interest. They are Epsilon, Eta, Zeta, and the latest is Mu. So, Mu is B1621 and it is known as 21H as well. Let's discuss about Mu variant in details now. Out of the variants of concern, these are the major variants. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Let's see what are the mutations that they have. Alpha has E484K. Beta also has E484K. Gamma also has E484K. Delta has a little bit of difference in the uh, replacement of the uh, amino acid. E484, instead of K, it is Q. P618, P681, alpha also has it. And... Uh, the others do not. And 501Y deletion. Alpha has it, beta has it, gamma has it, and uh, D614. All these variants do have this uh, mutation. So now let's see the mu variant. And what does it contain? As I told you earlier, it has 21, 21 mutations. Six over here, another six over here. You are familiar with the genome now. And this is the third part, which is uh, responsible about the spike protein. And in this spike protein of mu variant there are nine nine mutations out of them e484k and even though this is q it is similar to the same mutation so all these variants of concerns had this uh, 484K. Mu also has it. And N50Y deletion. UK variant had it. Beta variant had it. The South African. Gamma variant had it. The Brazil variant. So Mu also has it. And P681H, 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 
alpha variant had it and r three four six r three four six none of these uh, had that uh, mutation d six one four g d six one four g all these uh, variants of concerns had this uh, mutation so when we consider these four mutations all the variants of concerns had them so mu also has these mutations out of apart from that there are another one two three four four new mutations which are also in the spike protein as a result of these mutations there is a high possibility that this mu variant could have escaped from the immunity because the nature of the spike protein or the recognition of the spike protein to the antibodies would have been difficult because of these nine uh, mutations in the spike i'm not going to discuss in details about these 12 mutations in the other uh, genome parts of the uh, mu variant but this is the variant which had the most uh, different uh, spike proteins out of these old variants of concern uh, in the spike protein so that is why the scientist expected this mutation this variant to be very very uh, dangerous and highly infectious and highly transmissible and uh, expected to escape the immunity as well now we have an idea about the genome of mu variant and let's see what kind of influence that the mu variant did to the world first it was found in colombia in america uh, in january 2021 and the who de declared it as a various variant of interest on the 31st of august uh, 2021 delta variant was found in the late 2020 and by now it dominated the whole world whereas mu variant was found on 2021 january there is no big uh, difference in the uh, initial uh, uh, origin but how far that it has gone up to now even in the province of colombia even in colombia it is 39 percent it is prevalent only 39 percent at the moment so mu variant couldn't dominate even the original place of its origin and other other 61 percent of colombian uh, delta uh, colombian uh, covid uh, variant is uh, delta variant and how far that it has spread it all over already it has spread it to 39 countries all over the world but the adjoining province ecuador has only 13 percent prevalence of mu variant only 13 percent prevalence of mu variant that means the mu variant even though it has lot of mutations in the spike protein could not dominate as much as that we expected the reason behind it is mostly the other other variations of this uh, uh, I, I mentioned about another 12 mutations in the genome and those mutations perhaps might have contributed in a negative way we don't know and what is the worldwide uh, 
predominance of mu variant. The whole world predominant of mu variant is 0.1 percent up to now. So all these things, when we look into all these things, we can say that the mu variant couldn't dominate the world as fast as the delta variant uh, used to do. But there is one thing that we still don't know because, as I mentioned, there were so many changes in the spike protein and we all know now the spike protein is the base against which we produce all these vaccines apart from Sinovac. So we still don't know how far that this uh, new variant can escape from the acquired immunity, the immunity received by previous infections of COVID variants and how far that it can escape from the uh, immunity that we have given by the vaccines. This is the only thing that we don't know at the moment. So far in the United Kingdom that we found only about 44 or more cases of mu variant. All these cases are coming uh, as a result of the foreigners coming into the country. So there is no predominance all over the UK of this mu variant so far. Looking into all these things, we can say that the mu variant is not as uh, infectious or dominant as what the delta variant had become already. Thank you so much for listening to my uh, coffee break program. Uh, we are going to discuss various um, interesting medical subjects in the future in this program and uh, I'm going to focus on acute and internal medical uh, topics. Until we meet again with another coffee break program, goodbye to you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>